Hi, this is Dr. Tamar Seshkin from Bari, Italy, 17th Annual ISG Conference. Uh, I have Dr. Carlo De Chiri? De Chico. De Chico. Dr. Carlo De Chico, who has presented this morning a beautiful uh, presentation about complication of endometriosis with respect to ureter. Carlo works with Philip Chronix in Belgium. He's from Italy, actually. Yeah, from Italy. I want you, we, for the interview's sake, this is an internet interview, so it won't be as, uh, you don't have as much time. However, highlights of your presentation. I understand there's a significant medical legal uh, portion of the uh, legal activity against doctors involved in laparoscopic yes. surgery, endometrial surgery for, for uh, complication of the ureter. I just run by your headlines and let the reviewers around the world learn from your presentation, please. Thank you. Yeah, uh, this morning I was presenting uh, our experience about uh, ureter lesion in gynecology, and uh, especially because even if uh, we know that there's around two three percent of lesion happening in uh, gynecological surgery, this uh, uh, related to six percent of medical legal claims for obstetric and gynecology. So we we know that this is an important issue for all the gynecologists. Uh, what about we were discussing uh, mainly about the deep and endometriosis part. So we had a big series of 1,500 uh, cases of deep endometriosis and we found out that 35 lesions were carried out after deep endometriosis surgery and this is around 2% of uh, incidence. But most important we found that when an adrenophrosis preoperative was uh, detected, then the risk for ureteral lesion intraoperatively was of 21% of lesion. So uh, this is very impressive if compared with around 1.5% of lesion, I guess, when you don't have any, any adronephrosis. And this is very important in order to discuss about when, whenever to put a stent preoperatively or not, because we know that to put a stent is not without any risk. So to put systematically for every patient that uh, have to do deep endometriosis surgery, this can be sometimes maybe a disadvantage for the patient more than an advantage. And very important, we were discussing about the, the type of uh, repair you can do to this, this Before lesion. Before talk about the repair, how about stents with light, with uh, illumination? Does that make any difference? In my practice, I found yeah. them helpful to so, the degree. Yeah, these this are very, very nice tool. I saw them, but we are not using since it's... Uh, uh, at, at the moment, it's a little bit complex to, to have in all the hospitals, so it cannot be for everybody at the moment. But I think this is very useful, especially for the people that are in the learning curve, because this may help really in preventing injury and to gain experience. But probably after, uh, after uh, several years with, uh, with surgery, probably this is not really necessary. Uh, it will be of help when they will be very, very uh, uh, cheap option. So with deep in endometriosis, uh, when we talk of deep endometriosis of the posterior uh, pelvis, there is always some degree of ureteral involvement, uh, mostly uh, uh, serosal, but uh, the injury is high. So if we found an injury, uh, as a standard, we give methylene blue during the case. If you suspect any injury or we're, we are very proximal to it, if you find partial or total transaction of the ureter, tell us how we should approach to repair it. Yeah, uh, we had a um, very nice experience with uh, laparoscopic suturing. So we, we start to think about laparoscopic repair of lesion because this was becoming not only a complication but even an event in case of adrenophrosis. So we have to, to cure the patient and to find out the solution without requiring every time a urologist to perform a laparotomy or a boari flap. So we went through laparoscopic suture and we went through laparoscopic uh, reanastomosis for transection. So in case of laceration, you can put uh, a couple of stitches just to approximate the, the ureter after uh, having put a stent, a guided stent by, uh, by, by the urologist and with the laparoscopic assistant. Then, uh, this is the same also for, for, the, for the, the transaction. In case you just suspect a uh, an coagulation or superficial lesion, then you can put a prophylactic stent. We didn't have any case that required laparotomic reimplantation, and this is because we always try to, uh, to uh, go by la laparoscopy. Every time this was not possible because we were not uh, in, the, in the hospital, because we were not maybe in the country, so the urologists were trying to, uh, to solve the problem 
problem. Many of the cases, they start with just with a stent. And this, if continuous leakage can continue for four, five, six weeks, then it would be very difficult to, to, to repair. So in any case, if you have a lesion, even postoperatively, go by laparoscopy, put a stent and repair every kind of laceration or transection. Very good. It's always the, the patient first. For that purpose, uh, I believe all in all laparoscopic surgery, in, in every setting, urologist who is familiar with the disease endometriosis is a must in the team practice of taking care of endometriosis lesions. And that says it all. I, I think uh, ureter is part of uh, the uh, anatomic structures that are frequently uh, attacked by endometriosis. We have to be aware of it. Uh, recognizing it is the first step to prevent complications. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.